Hello, my name is Dr. Gaurav. I'm one of the psychiatry doctors, and today I'm going to talk to you about what I found new in Maudsley's 15th edition. One of the things which Maudsley has emphasized is genetic testing before prescribing lithium to clozapine associated neutropenia. Clozapin has been associated with neutropenia and the incident is, incidence is 3 out of 100 and sometimes it might be associated with severe neutropenia, the incidence is 1 out of 100. So like lithium was supposed to increase uh, the amount of neutrophils and but, but there are some people especially of the African descent or West Asian descent who have their abnormalities in DARC gene or Duffy antigen. So they need to get tested before they get prescribed lithium. Even the dose of the lithium which has been prescribed is 400 mg before the full blood count has been carried out and the lithium levels should be 0.4. But again, now it has been found out that lithium is not too protective against clozapine associated neutropenia. And if that occurs, the clozapine might have to be discontinued. But there are a lot of ifs and, ifs and buts, buts. But that's why this time Maudsley 15th edition talks about starting the GCSF factors or the growth factors for increasing the neutrophil counts. For the first time in the history of Maudsley, they have introduced the genetic testing for clozapine so we were talking about this over a long period of time, but it has been formalized this time in the Maudsley's 15th edition. So I will just try to make it as simple as possible, but please, we do need to read the book to understand the genetic test for clozapine, which has been widely used in the United Kingdom, and hopefully it will be available in the other countries as well. But it is available in some of the trusts, but it has been like, you know, being more popularized by, by its inception in this edition of Maudsley. So they say that how do you know which uh, person is going to respond to clozapine or how do you know which person is not going to respond to clozapine? So there are three different variants which have good reliability and good predictability to tell your therapeutic outcomes with clozapine. One of the variant is HTR2A and it has a single nucleotide polymorphism RS6313C. So what like if you have this kind of you know think if you have uh, this kind of variant this kind of variant in your genetic makeup and also like we have to see if you have if you are a CC carrier or T carrier. So if you are a T carrier then you are more likely to respond to the treatment as compared to C carriers. And if you want to say the percentage, 54 out of 100 of the T carriers are going to respond to clozapine as compared to the C carriers. But if we look at, look at HTR2A with SNP RS6314, then C is more likely to respond as compared to T. All right? And if you look at HTR3ARS1062613, forget about the numbers, we just have to see like, you know, there are three different kind of variants. Then again, C is less likely to respond to T LE. All right, so among these variants, we find, find that C is overall less likely to respond to T carrier allele unless the variant is HTR2ARS. 6314. Another interesting thing which I found in Maudsley was about Pimamansarin or Nuplazid. It was a medicine which was encouraged for Parkinson's associated psychosis or Lewy body dementia associated psychosis perhaps because of its action on 5-HT1A receptor, it is an inverse agonist for it and it helps in the psychotic symptoms. It means that it reduces the activity of that receptor. But now it has been the mods is this edition, 15th edition is encouraging using of pimavanserin even for Alzheimer's and psychosis associated with it. 
and it even encourages its use of the sexual dysfunction which might be occurring as a result of antidepressant usage. Another interesting thing which I observed in Maudsley's 15th edition is they talked about esketamine openly. It's also called as Spravato. So there are three different devices which are available for esketamine. One of them is 28 milligram, the other is 56 milligram, and third is 84 milligram. So this device has two lights on it. Like for instance, you go to this esketamine or Spravato clinic you are assessed for a period of one to two hours. After that, you take one spray in one nostril till the green light appears. Then you take another spray in another nostril till the green light appears. And there's a five minutes gap between two of the sprays which are given and you are observed for a period of three to four hours after that. So in the 56 milligram device, there are two devices which are used, all right? And in 84 milligram device, there are three devices which are being used in a single sitting or a single session. So the general regime depends upon the amount of severity of the depression. It can be done uh, twice a week, which can be reduced to once a week, or perhaps it can be started with 84 milligram twice a week to 56 milligram twice a week. And then after that, 28 milligram twice a week. Another medicine which Maudsley's 15th edition talks about is Brexpiprazole. Brexpiprazole is a medicine which is just like aripiprazole, but it has a partial antagonistic activity at T1A receptor and D2 receptors, and lesser activity at D2 receptors because of which it doesn't produce akathisia. And also it is uh, antagonist at 5-HT2A, which is again reducing many of the side effects because of aripiprazole. So it has been encouraged right now for elderly depression, especially doses of 0.5 milligram and 1 milligram. So this is the first time when Maudsley, when Esli carbazepine has been introduced. In the previous editions, they talked about carbamazepine and oxcarbazepine. Oxcarbazepine is the derivative of carbamazepine. And uh, this diagram has been designed by us, but like we are waiting for the formal designs by some standard textbooks like Stephen Stalls. And SD carbazepine focuses just upon the potassium channels. Oxcarbazepine is a glutamate uh, receptor antagonist. And obviously all of them, they stop the sodium channels. So these are the medicines which are for uh, used dif uh, definitely for your seizures but for your rapid cycling disorder, or you know, you have the cyclothymia, SD carbazepine is also being encouraged this time by Motze. And the advantage of SD carbazepine is that it is like once a daily drug, you can start from 800 milligram to 1200 milligram. So if the compliance and adherence are not the issues, you can use this medicine.